In this lecture, we'll examine the period doubling route to chaos in the logistic equation in considerable detail. So here's the bifurcation for the logistic equation. R goes from 0 to 4, period 1 goes to period 2 to 4, and so on, and then all this interesting behavior in here. Here's a closer view of that. Again, you've seen these before. This is from 3 to 4, period 2 to 4 to 8, then regions of chaos, periodic windows, more chaos, and so on. And what I want to do now is focus on just this particular portion of the bifurcation diagram, where the periods double and then eventually give us chaos. So I'm going to zoom in on that even more. And um, we'll look at this bifurcation diagram. So now this goes just from 3 to 3.6. Um, it's period 1 over here. At 3.0, it becomes period 2, then period 4, then period 8, and so on. And by the time we're over here, in these dark regions, the function is chaotic, and it has sensitive dependence on initial conditions. So if one looked for the butterfly effect over here, one would see that, yes, at 3.59 or whatever that is, there is indeed chaos, a periodicity, and the butterfly effect over here, there is not the butterfly effect. Um, the easiest way actually to test for that is with the Lyapunov exponent. Over here, the Lyapunov exponent is positive, and over here, it's negative, meaning that there's not sensitive dependence. In any event, there's a transition from periodic, non-chaotic behavior to chaotic behavior um, somewhere right around here. So we'll look at what happens as we approach that chaos order transition point. So, um, I want to start by looking at the length of this. So how long, in the sense of what range of R values gives me period 2 behavior, what range of R values give me period 4, and what range of R values give me period um, 8. So I want to look at what these R values are where these transitions occur. And I'll call the R value for this first transition R1, and that's 3.0. So this transition, I'll put a little arrow there, occurs right when R is 3.0. Then there's a transition that occurs here. This is transition from period 2 to period 4. And it turns out that this occurs at R is about 3.0. 4, 4, 9, 4, 8. So I figured that out by zooming in on the bifurcation diagram, looking more and more closely here um, around this point, and trying to get as accurate a value for where this line splits into two as possible. This was the um, intermediate, um, one of the, um, maybe it's a beginner intermediate problem from last unit's homework. Okay, there's also a transition then over here, and this is where the behavior goes from period 4 to period 8. And I'll call that R3, it's the third bifurcation, and that turns out to be at around 3.544089. So that's where this transition occurs. To the left of this number, we have period 4. A little to the right of this number, we have period 8. And then lastly, there's a transition from period 8 to 16. And that's really hard to see on this diagram. We'll have to zoom in a lot. But if we did, we would find that that transition occurs where R is about 3.56. 4407. Oh, so we have um, four bifurcations from period 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 8, and 8 to 16. And they occur approximately at these R values. And I'll call the first R value R1, and then R2, R3, and R4. We're interested in this length, what range of R values give us period 2 behavior? 
and I'll call that length capital delta 1. So let me draw that here. So I'll do it in the middle. So this triangle is the capital Greek letter delta, and it's just R2 minus R1, this length minus that length. So this is the range of R values for which we have period two behavior. Then I'll and do a similar thing for period four, and then also the period eight region. So this line segment here, this length right where my finger is, is delta two. And this small line segment here, notice the, the regions are getting smaller, is delta three. And delta two will be r3 minus r2, delta 3 is r4 minus r3. Um, let me write that. This is r4 minus r3, and delta 2 is r3 minus r2. Okay, so we've got these deltas. This length that length and that length. And we observe, as we've seen in the bifurcation diagram, <coughs> these lengths are getting smaller. So what we'll do next is we'll calculate the ratio of this length to that length. And I'll call that lowercase delta. So delta one is just over delta two. So little delta, that's a, the lowercase Greek letter delta, is just this, this length divided by that length. And in terms of the r's, let's see, what will that be? That will be delta 1, which is r2 minus r1 over r3 minus r2. So we have numbers for these, and we can plug these numbers in, and we'll get, we can get a numerical value for delta. So um, let me do that. So this will be So I've just plugged in the numbers I have for R2, R1, and R3. And there they are. And now it's subtraction. I always like doing subtraction on a calculator. Well, let's see, this one I don't need to do. 3.44, blah, 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 minus 3.0 is just 0.44, blah, blah, blah. So this on top is 0 0.44, and blah, blah, blah is 948. And then this subtraction on the bottom I better do on a calculator. Let's see, do it over here. So I've got 3.5440895. Minus 3.44948. And that gives me 0 0.094609. And the last thing to do is carry out that division. I'll do that quickly. Uh, let's see, 0 0.44948 divided by 0 0.0. 94609, and I get 4.751. Okay, so um, that's a bunch of calculator work. Um, not tremendously exciting, I don't think, but uh, let's just interpret this number 4.751. What that says is, is that this length is 4.751 times longer than this length. That's all it means. Um, we can do a similar thing now comparing this length to that length. And if I do that, delta 2 is just capital delta 2 over delta 3. It's this length divided by that smaller length. And I can define that in terms of r's, carry out all this stuff. There's no point redoing all this subtraction. If I do that, I get the number 4. 
six, five, six, four. So I've, um, I've skipped a lot of intermediate steps here that you can just do in a calculator reading off these numbers. And we get this number. And what this means is that this length is 4.65, about 4.66 times larger than this length. And we could keep doing this. Um, we could look at delta 3, delta 3 over delta 4, delta 4, delta 4 over delta 5, and so on. And we can ask ourselves, what happens? We can try to do an experiment. What happens as I um, sort of go deeper and deeper into this transition, the periods double more and more, what happens to this ratio? So here's a simplified view of what we just did. Here's a um, schematic of the bifurcation diagram, period 2 to 4 to 8 to 16. Delta 1 is this length, delta 2 is that length, and so on. And we're looking at the ratios. How much larger is this than that? We call that delta 1, and that turned out to be about 4.751. There's an approximate here because this, was, this is an experimental result, and um, there very likely is some numerical error. It's really hard to pin down the exact, exact value of this transition. But this is pretty good. And then um, delta 2, that's how much longer is this length than that length. And that was about 4.6564. And we can keep going and define delta n as follows. So um, it's just the ratio of one periodic region to that uh, divided by the ratio. Let me say that again. It's the ratio of these two deltas. This is the length of one periodic region. This is the length of the doubled periodic region. And what one finds, that as n gets large, this approaches the number 4.669. So that as we go deeper and deeper into this period doubling, um, the lengths of these um, pitchforks or branches approaches a constant ratio. So that each branch, uh, this branch is about 4.669 times as large as that one. This is 4.669 times as large as that one, and so on. This doesn't become exact until n becomes large, but it's a pretty good approximation even for small n, even for the first couple set of, uh, uh, of period doublings. So this says that as we get closer and closer to this transition point, the transition from periodic to chaotic behavior, um, there's a regularity to that, that we see new periods appearing um, at this constant ratio. So now we have a way of characterizing the period doubling route to chaos in the logistic equation. And we can see if the same thing holds true for other bifurcation diagrams. There are two quizzes following this lecture where you'll carry out some of this analysis, but for the cubic equation instead of the logistic equation. In order to do that, you'll need a program that makes bifurcation diagrams for the cubic equation. And there's a link to just such a program in the section titled uh, bifurcation programs or links to bifurcation programs um, on the navigation bar on the Complexity Explorer site. So um, find that program and open it up and then give the next two quizzes a try and see how these deltas work for another equation.